The upper tributaries of the Xingu flow northwards, draining into what will eventually become the Xingu River, famous for its rapids. But here in the south, the Brazilian shield is tilted less, and the tributaries flow more slowly. This region is under intense pressure from deforestation, industrial agriculture, and illegal gold mining. Most of these habitats are now surrounded by agricultural fields, serviced by modern GPS-guided combines and aircraft that spray agrochemicals. Many are not protected, but bordered by a narrow swath of swampland that makes the rivers difficult to access, except where the roads cross the valleys. In the dry season, these rivers run incredibly clear, and their white sand or white clay substrate makes the water glow in emerald green from above. The trees and burichi palms that grow in the water are stained red from road dust alongside the transect of the road. This place is the access point for an incredible habitat, filled with aquatic plants and a unique fish community that is completely different from the one found in the rapids of the Shingo River. In the peak dry season, the water is carrying almost no debris, and the strong current sweeps any sediments off the plants, allowing even fine leaf plants to thrive. Every possible place is densely overgrown with plants, with water lilies and aquatic grasses stretching out over the stem plants, nearly reaching the surface. At first glance, this habitat seems to pauperate. Few fish show themselves to the casual observer. This makes sense, because predators also thrive here. Leopoldi stingrays, pike cichlids, electric eels, aymara wolffish, peacock bass, piranhas, and barracuda all hunt these shallow shelves from the deeper water below. Small fish are either well hidden in the dense vegetation or so well camouflaged that they are difficult to spot. The most stunning fish here are actually feeding on the plants. The small Leparinus tristriatus usually occurs in small troops of three to six fish. Even better hidden in the plants are Lemolita proxima. Moving alongside the leaves of the plants in the current, they are often difficult to spot. Tiny Rhinotosinclus acuant feed on the bio cover in the same leaves, at times bright green or rust red in color, perfectly matching the color of the leaves of Eleocharis intersticta and Syngonanthus macrocala. Cabomba forcata and Aerocalon satacetum grow in huge pillowy forests, and small characins such as Hufesobrucon, Mancausia, and Microchematobrucon remain in the dense understory at most times. Where the road crosses the river, narrow bridges force the river to increase in flow. Snorkeling under the bridges scares up bats that use these as daytime shelters. The Burichi palm trees like this sort of habitat growing directly in the water and creating some shaded areas. With the increased complexity of the habitat caused by the road construction, fallen timbers, palm fronds, and large branches caught up in the narrows, the number of fish increases rapidly. The seemingly insignificant change in water flow and structure gives opportunity to many fish. The usually bare bottom of the river is more shallow here equally covered with plants and large rocks used to secure the bridge and loose timbers create hiding places for predators and small fish alike. Like coral heads, the large structures are topped with different plant species, many of which difficult to identify, perhaps marginal swamp plants growing permanently submerged in the extremely clear water. This area looks more like a carefully sculpted planted aquarium than a natural habitat. The bridge is a busy place. Groups of mid-sized fish such as Leparinus, Hemiotis, Barracuda, and young peacock bass travel upstream through this narrow, likely to get from the flooded forest beyond back to the main river ahead. After so many trips to the rocky Shingu Rapids with its interplay of light and shadow and substrates of black and red rocks, this place with its emerald green water and completely white sand and clay substrates is almost confusing to the eye. On the downstream side of the bridge, the shallow water is teeming with fish. Groups of brilliant green Bruconodenos, black Monchausia fenota, and a swirling mass of other species move about erratically, capturing tiny particles in the current. The current is very strong here, and the hair grass is completely flattened by the onrushing water. To the small characins, this is not only an ideal place to feed, but also a place of relative safety. 
because they could spot predators such as pipe cichlids coming into this area more easily. These slender, small characins are surprisingly adept at swimming in such extreme current, and it explains why we may find some of these fish are not easy to keep in the aquarium, where conditions are considerably different. If you're enjoying this video, consider buying the Shingu book with photos of this and many other habitats. The book is now available at belowwater.com. Make sure to also check out my second video about the Shingu Rapids, linked here and in the description. Please make sure to subscribe to this channel and share this video with your friends and on social media. Returning to the main river reveals a steep overhanging bank, consisting of porcelain white clay with a thin band of loose gravel at the bottom. Under the hollowed out overhang, deep in the shadows is where the larger predators spend their day. The main part of the river seems virtually empty except for a few larger fish moving below. Swimming along the edge of the bank with the deep emerald water below is an opportunity to see the really deep water teeming with fish. Check out the Shingu 360 video linked here and in the description. If you have an opportunity to check out the video with Oculus glasses in 360 degree immersive video. It is filmed in a different river not far from here, but the habitats are very similar. It is likely that in very dry years, this riverbank is completely out of the water. The aquatic plants will then remain dormant until the next flood event and only emerge rapidly and regrow into the dense forest seen here. In Canada, where ice covers the rivers in the winter months, aquatic plants also die off, only to re-emerge in the spring and rapidly grow into forests in the early summer. Where the water has risen over the banks, narrow openings reveal an entrance to the flooded areas beyond the shoreline. Here, in the slower moving water, tiny Charisidium, Microschematobrucon, Fluvifilux, and Tyaria live in the very shallow water, somewhat out of reach of the larger predators. These flooded shallow areas are the spawning ground for many species in these rivers. The slower water flow and dense vegetation affords spawning grounds to piranhas, Metinus fasciatus, Metinus polystictus, Lugubria rosamariae, Satanoperca, Geophagus, Mesonauta, Equidens, and a number of other species. There are no rocks here and few larger wood structures, so the cichlids have to compete for fallen palm fronds or roots of the larger trees to find places to lay their eggs. A pair of Rosemary's Pike cichlids guards their eggs in the shallows. The parents are close to 30 centimeters or 12 inches long and among the biggest fish in the shallows. Like all lugubris group Pike cichlids, their babies will remain with the parents until they reach almost half the size of the parents. Perhaps the longest brood care of any fish species. This group of around 30 young hunts the dense forest of plants between the parents. At this size, they are already old enough to feed on most insect larvae and small charisins in this habitat. With few threats here in the shallows, the parents are less vigilant when their young reach this size. And as the babies continue to grow, they stray farther and farther away from the parents, with some leaving the safety of their guardians at around finger length, while several may remain with the female for even longer. This pike cichlid is restricted to the upper reaches of the Shingu and seems to only occur in this kind of heavily planted habitat. In other tributaries, we found Lugubria phyospilus that seem more at home in rocky substrates and occur downstream all the way to the rapids of the middle Shingu near Sao Felix. Striolatus piranhas are spectacular in their nuptial dress, sporting bright silver and white stripes on their body. Leading up to building their spawning pits, the piranhas form dense schools chasing each other through the shallows. With the onset of the rains, the males will begin to build their nests and court females swimming above. Intermixed with the piranhas are male metinus. The paku will simply scatter the eggs in the dense plants. Metinus males now show off with deep red and black patches on their belly and fins, courting schools of hundreds of females swimming higher up in the water column. Habitats in the middle Shingu undergo a tremendous change, brought on by the flood pulse of the rainy season that signals the spawning for so many species. One has to wonder if this dynamic is equally spectacular here in the beautiful and delicate habitats of the upper Shingu. Please make sure to subscribe to this channel and share this video with your friends and on social media.